he did this mean thing to my mom where if she said something about it, he would make her feel so stupid and he would manipulate her to the point where she actually thought that she was wrong and she would feel so stupid. And he never did that to me until one day that he, right before she really kicked him out the last final time, he did that to me. And I, I actually started to believe that I was wrong. And then I like was like, wait. So this tree was donated by Gospel Gardens in uh, memory of my mother. She passed away uh, roughly about a year ago. And I needed some place to go just to think about her, talk to her, and they donated this tree. And The sheriff's report says he told them the stabbing in question initially happened by accident. Michelle Schimmel threatened to throw him out of the house. They got into an argument. Detectives say Nathaniel Schimmel grabbed a large kitchen knife and started cutting and stabbing his mother. Good Investing. evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name's Drip Drop, and I'll be your host as always. Need anything? Uh, water or anything? Oh, you're riding peanuts on. Yeah, I just came from the barn. Did you? Storm prep. How? What do you guys just spray paint them? And oh, there's so much to do. It's unbelievable. What are you gonna do about flood? See, that's I'm anticipating like flood. Well, that's our, what I'm thinking. The museum is on. It's basically like the highest point in Flagler County, and it's like all just sand. So we're good. Oh, the good. Flooding. Nothing will really flood. That's what I'm worried about. I mean. I live out on the west side, and I can remember, I was telling my mom about it this morning, I can remember, like, when I was in high school, getting off the school bus, and we were, like, in two to three feet of water, so it has the capability of flooding, and I have a feeling the storm is just going to, like, saturate us. Mm -hmm. My mom's service is a Sunday. Are you serious? Yeah. Why did I think it was, like, already... Mm -hmm. We were going to have it last Sunday, but a lot of family couldn't fly in because it was so, it was already so late, and it was Labor Day weekend. Who did you go through? What funeral home? Were um, they heritage. suggesting or anything? Or? We're, we did it through Heritage, but we're having the service at my barn. Okay. You poor thing, you're not catching a break anywhere, are you? No. No. But she did make it very um, obvious how strong you are, so unfortunately you're being tested to the limits, I think. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I know you're surrounded by a million people to, to lend you a hand, but mm -hmm. we're no different. I mean, if it comes down to, you know, grasping on resources that are law enforcement related, obviously, you know, Artie and I mm -hmm. uh, will all step up. Okay. I'm very animal oriented, so if you get anything in the in those fields, um, I will definitely go to the bitter end for that. Uh, if you need any help with your animals or anything, even if it just requires checking on them at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, just keep us all in mind because we'll do whatever we possibly can. Okay. Um, obviously, we are required to get statements from everybody. Um, and I know it's been a little bit. Um, and I'm going to have to refresh because I've been out of town too. I mean, just kind of been off the radar. Just got back today. Actually, it's my first day back. So I've been calling out of state. Um, just trying to get back in and get everything accomplished. And so. I am going to basically just take, I, I still want to just ponder on a little, a few things mm -hmm. to try to, to get a generalized feel what was normal prior to all this, um, if anything changed, and, um, you know, because as much as we try to, you guys are developing your own answers, I, I'm well aware of, but as far as us telling the state stuff, um, relaying mm -hmm. stuff from you guys is important too, you know, it's, it's the bigger picture. And, and I want you to understand that, yes, we are in a position where we have to enforce the law, but that doesn't mean that we're not human beings mm -hmm. and um, we don't look at the totality. Uh, the only thing that I will ask is, I don't know if anybody spoke to you, like if your dad had any say on what to say or not to say to us. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't, I haven't talked to my dad about like anything legal or okay. basically anything. Um, all I ask in here is just to be brutally honest with me, like mm -hmm. I, the first time I met you, Unfortunately, that night, um, I just ask you to be honest mm -hmm. um, and and not worry about the later part because you have you shouldn't be worried about that portion. Um, you could be a loving, supportive person without um, hindering the investigation and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and the investigation is somewhat. I mean, it's it's not like we're we're trying to figure something out. It's just yeah. a matter of trying to 
you know, close it where we know what's best um, and, and stuff like that. So I'm sure you can read between the lines with that. Um, so let me see, make sure my phone's off because my daughter's first day back to school, so she's blowing my phone up. Um, let's see, it's 12.15, today's the 5th already. Alright, and I cheated, and I printed out your driver's license. So, <laughs> let's get a picture, by the way. Uh, let's see, and that's got your current address. Lane and... Yeah, for now, I guess. I'm not living there right now. But You're not? No. No, I won't. You can't do it. There. Gotcha. Gosh, I can't blame you. Alright, and then your phone number... Where did my text go? Phone number is the three eight six two eight. Okay, and um, what we do with these statements? It's going to be casual, so don't don't get caught in the the um, the regular stuff. But I do have to swear again before we get started. So raise your right hand. Swear and affirm the statement you provide today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And I'll be done. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, can you help me understand the dynamics of the family? Um, prior to this. Let's go, let's go back. How far? <laughs> as far as you think I need to know. Um, oh gosh. It's summarizing. So much all the time. From the time my brother was little, he like saw so many different specialists, so many new medications. And even when he was older, my mom would try and get him all these medications, but then he wouldn't take them, but he would act like he would. And she'd find the pills everywhere. And that was always a mess. And she, I don't know, just like the past couple of years, she has just He's had a couple jobs, him and his best friend Christian, they would like get jobs at the same place, but then like Christian would either get fired or he'd quit and then Nathan would like not go or he just like would not quit, he just wouldn't show up. So he just kept losing jobs and he wouldn't do anything, he wouldn't go to class. Um, so you guys have lived here as, as, long, as long as you've yeah. been here? Okay. so. You're, obviously, you're the old, or no, he's the oldest. He's the oldest. You're the youngest. There's only two siblings. Mm -hmm. um, and your mom and dad were married and moved here. Well, they lived here. They met. They met here in Palm Coast, and then she got pregnant, and then they got married, and then they bought the house. Okay. All right. So they've always been here in Flagler County. Yeah. Um, Except for when my dad moved out a couple of years ago. He moved because he's he's always been an alcoholic and then I didn't really realize it growing up um, I didn't know because he was never like abusive he was just kind of like he wasn't super mean but he just I when I grew up I knew I recognized the signs and I understood and I mean by the time I think when I was how long was I, I think it's been two years that he's had the house up in St. Augustine so probably when I was like 17, I was 18, she finally kicked him out and was like, you need to go. And I'm pretty sure she was helping him with bills. Um, he only pays like 500 a month on that house in St. Augustine. It's a real old house. So he's had that house for a while? He's renting it. Okay. Um, so yeah, he was living up there for a while and he had a job. And then he would come down occasionally and they would try and work things out and then blah, blah, blah. And he'd start drinking. And so she would kick him back out. He would go up there and it was just kind of like a vicious cycle. And then about a year ago, um, she kicked him out for good because he just wouldn't stop drinking. And then finally one day he, he decided that he was just going to quit for himself and that was it. And then he quit and he was, he was sober for a while and mom let him move back. And so he was here for like 11 months. Um, and then just like a week and a half before it happened, she just, she decided that she didn't want to be with him anymore. She, I mean, she loved him, but she didn't know if she could be with him. So she, um, she told him to go back up there. She needed her space to just figure things out. But I really didn't think, I don't know, she kind of told me that she just didn't want to be with him anymore. So he wasn't drinking at that point? No, he wasn't. But um, a couple days before this happened, he had started, he started drinking. drinking. Yeah. What, what were his episodes of drinking? I mean, was he violent? Was he just lazy? No, he wasn't. I don't, it's hard to, he was very different when he drank. I would know the signs, but if a normal person wouldn't be able to tell. Really? Oh, yeah. No, not at all. I, and he you was, guys were up on it. Yeah, I knew every little sign. And if you said, he had this really 
he did this mean thing to my mom or if she said something about it, he would make her feel so stupid and he would manipulate her to the point where she actually thought that she was wrong and she would feel so stupid. And he never did that to me until one day that he, right before she really kicked him out the last final time, he did that to me. And I, I actually started to believe that I was wrong. And then I like was like, wait, this is what he's doing to her. And I was like, no. Like, get out. What would he convince you guys you, that you're wrong about? About him drinking. Oh, Every time okay. my mom or I would confront him, he w he would just, like, get so angry really fast. And he was never violent, but he would just start yelling, and how could you do this, and blah, blah, blah. And he just, he'd get so angry. And, and how did Nathan fit into this? What did he... Nathan would just, like, go hide in his room. Okay. He, and then sometimes my dad would get on his case about stuff and he'd get really mad and angry. Most of the time my brother would just plug in headphones and, but my, my dad and my brother like never got along. My dad could never get over the fact that my brother like wasn't normal and he just couldn't really deal with that. He, my mom was very patient. She was always really good about it, but my dad never could really grasp the fact that he wasn't, he couldn't be normal even if he tried. Right. And I, I had trouble too, but I wasn't nearly as bad as my dad. I like kind of understood, but I also knew that he could try and be better. Not normal, but he could be better. But he didn't. So I always blamed him for that. But my dad never could get that. And they always used to argue about stuff. And my dad would just get so heated and angry. And sometimes they would have screaming matches. Never violent. Never physical. No, though. ever. I mean, sometimes my brother would, like, flick him off, and my dad would, like, get in his face, and don't you ever do that again, or blah, blah, blah. But, it's no. pretty normal stuff. Yeah. How was he through school, though? I mean, he oh. made it through FPC. Barely. I honestly have no idea how he graduated. He was, he's a smart kid. He is so smart. Oh, my God. But he just, he wouldn't apply himself to anything. Job, school, nothing. He somehow passed high school. I don't really know. Um... And then he was going to start college, and mom, he, he couldn't drive then. He didn't get his license until like a year ago, and this was a couple years ago. My mom would drive him to the school before she went to work in the morning, drop him off with his laptop, and he was supposed to be going to class, but instead he was sitting in like the hallway playing on his laptop all day long. Oh, and she didn't know this forever. And so he just was doing that, and she was, this. she tried, I think he, Two whole semesters, she tried to get him to go, and it just wasn't working. He was failing, and so... It was so he was so enrolled fun. in regular classes, though, yeah. at that point? Mm -hmm. And then did she get him enrolled in something else? Or? No. He wouldn't... He just refused. He wouldn't do anything. So he didn't graduate, or he did? He graduated from high school, not from college. Okay. Okay, so he made it through high school on normal classes. Um, yeah. I think when he was younger, he used to take some... He used to have meetings with like one of the counselors or something. But he, I think he always took regular classes. Do you remember the days, um, did he have a lot of behavioral stuff at home? Did your mom have to battle with when he was really When he was younger, he was always getting, I mean, he wasn't getting into a lot of fights, but one time he like threw a chalk racer at some kid and got in trouble. And I don't, kids would bully him really bad just yeah, because he was different. So, I mean, sometimes he would stick up for himself. One time he ran away from the school and ran to my grandma's house when he was over at Indian Trails or whatever. High school, um, he didn't really get into a whole lot of trouble in high school. I don't think he really ever did. He got he got better about that, but he would just he would kept to himself. Was your mom pretty open with towards I mean towards the later part? I mean obviously when you're old enough to, um, I I mean I hear your you and your mom were close as far Very, as like yeah. friendship wise. Mm -hmm. She Just, would. I mean, she would tell me certain things about how she she didn't really know what else to do with Nathan, especially in, like, the last year or so. And I would try and help her and as much as I could because it's, sometimes I was just like, we'll just, like, kick him out and boot him out. But then other times I was like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't really know what else that you can do. So she turned to her brother and she had counseling for herself. Yeah. She was going to Deborah. What are some of the things she tried? Well, she would, she always, she constantly was writing documents for Nathan. Like, if you don't do this, this, and this, I'm taking away your laptop, or I'm taking away your phone. And she would, like, make him sign it. And at one point, she had the documents and signed and had taken away his laptop. 
And then one day he like called the cops and the cops showed up because he was saying that that was his property and that she had it, but she had the documents, but I think he stole the document and like chopped it up. So I don't think she ever found it. So I don't really remember what happened with that. It was, it How was long stupid. was that? A year and a half ago. Okay. So not that long. No. And so it, it was just a constant battle. She was taking things away and then he would like get birthday money and then he'd send away for a tablet and that would come in the mail. He would have that. He would just like show up with laptops that he got from his friends. She was just so aggravated. She didn't know what to do. So she would take that away and then she put his bed out. Finally, she put his bed out on the porch, which is like screened in, but no AC. So it's right. hot. And um, she put his bed out there and she told him that he, he had to sleep out there. He wasn't going to abide by the house rules. We thought that he was just going to like sleep inside on the couch, but he actually stayed out there, which was a surprise to both of us. And then he still was not abiding by any of the rules, and he would fight my mom about everything. Everything that she asked him to do, he would make it into such a big deal, and he wouldn't do it. And he was literally just doing nothing all day long. And he would either like sit in the bathroom and play on his phone, or like sit in the bathroom or draw and read. That's the one thing he did a lot. He would just go in our bathroom, the bathroom that him and I shared, and he'd sit in there for hours at a time, just like on his laptop or on his phone, just because he didn't have a room in our house. It's only two bedrooms, and I had a room, and my mom had a room. So his bedroom was kind of, it was the kitchen, but we had it like a bunch of shelves, and we had um, things hanging up. So that was kind of his room, but it's not, it wasn't a real room. So I think right. he went to the bathroom. To have his For privacy. Yeah, privacy. You've never known him to do drugs or anything, though. The only type of drugs that he wouldn't take are his behavioral medication. Yeah, I think he mentioned to my mom that he smoked weed like once. <laughs> and she was like, why do you do that? I was like, I don't know. But <laughs> that was, that that was a long time ago. Yeah. No, no, he, did, he doesn't do drugs. Every once in a while, my mom would be like, "Does he? I wonder if he does drugs, but I just don't think so. And your mom worked every day? Um, Monday through Thursday. She had Fridays off. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every once in a while she'd work on a Friday, but... And how was he, when he got out, when him and mom went at it, um, how did he treat you? I mean, were you I there would sometimes just try to get away? No, I would always, if it got out of hand, I would step in. Because she would just let him, he would push her around so much because I, she just, I don't know, she's so soft and she would let him push her and I would sometimes step in and I'm like no Nathan that's not how it's gonna happen and when we were younger he used to like threaten me like he was gonna punch me or whatever but he never did and I'm like I'm like okay punch me you'll go to jail and that was that was that but I don't know so he never took it out on you or anything no would, I mean we would have more you think no he, he didn't really respect me at all. But I would get so angry because he, he would just take complete advantage of my mother. And that really made me so angry. So I would, sometimes I would just like blow up and I would just tell him that like everything that was wrong and how he needed to step up or get out and how he's not doing anything. He would try and get on my case and like I have two jobs and going to school and he just, he would try and say something about anything just to piss me off what was his defense i mean he's not doing anything yeah i know that's so what, why i was getting I mean, so angry. what is his argument he was does just, he think he's not capable or is he no just not want to? he just doesn't want to so he's more than capable oh yeah he can have he can have a job he worked at walmart he worked at steak and shake he worked on a farm for some lady and he doesn't do anything outside like what i don't He's perfectly fine. He's capable. He can drive a car. I mean, I don't know how good he is. I've never been in the vehicle. But he can have a job. I don't... I don't know. He's he's good with just, like, basic jobs. He was working at Walmart, like, stocking produce. He was a dishwasher. So he can have just, like, a basic job. He didn't want college at all, but... He wanted... He was big into computers. Right. He wanted to be, like... I don't know, somebody who fixed computers or made computers or something. I never really understood what he did, but he was really big into that. He wanted to do that as like a job, but we could never find anywhere around here that would help him. Computer-based stuff. Yeah. Deal. Um, 
when your mom would get so frustrated though as far as like trying to help him what what was her explanation of why she had to go so above and beyond so that he could have a life and he would be able to support himself one day because he couldn't live there forever and that's so she, she knew he was capable of it oh as yeah well. for he was sure just being lazy yeah she knew that he was capable and he's really smart he just doesn't apply himself to anything gotcha that's kind of i gotta be honest i i mean i sat down with him that night um probably about 40 minutes just chatting and um he was very calm and very expressive just um, talking about life and school and his computer and his games and i mean just I, you know because i it was my job to try to determine because i i realized what you had said before he was autistic but you couldn't tell it so I wanted to make sure that he understood everything I said. Um, that's kind of where I was trying to head with that with respect f with what you guys had told me. Um, and I just couldn't, I couldn't find any ailments or, um, I mean, I even asked him if he had any, you know, handicaps of any sort. Um, is he on any medication? Nothing. Um, I just couldn't find it. Um, and that's one of the reasons too that I, I wanted to back up always and see where he was most uh, affected um, he, he just seems pretty normal yeah he I mean anybody in school they picked on him because they like thought he was normal but mentally things aren't right for him and yeah. I can see it because I've grown up with him sure. but just weird things like he shaves his hands and he won't especially the animals that's one of the big things he won't like pet them he'll like ball up his hands and like kind of touch them with the outside of his hands and that's like one of his biggest things he's really? like and he like washes his hands all the time even when he doesn't need to and he like shaves part of his arms and his hands and stuff and he's he's oh he's got these little ticks that you wouldn't notice as far as emotion how does he he um, he doesn't do that he's got a really hard time with showing emotion he loved my mom that was like the only person that he really did love um, and he wouldn't ever, like, he didn't want to be touched or hugged or whatever, and so he had a weird way of showing emotion. If he, like, wanted to just, like, be close to my mom, he would just, like, poke her. That was, like, one of his real big things. And, like, tickle her on the sides or just, like, poke her or, like, touch the back of her neck where her neck was numb because of her surgery. He would just do, like, weird things like that. That was his, like, showing of affection. Or just, like, being close to her when, like, when we're watching TV, he would, like, kind of be on the other side of the couch. But he didn't ever just like blatantly, I love you or give me a sure. hug or. So you never seen him outward like affectionate. No, I mean even on like birthday cards when he like would write like I love you happy birthday he like wrote it super super small. <laughs> so how did did your mom show him affection? She just tried. Like she would like try and give him hugs and he'd be like get off me. <laughs> but she yeah she would show him affection and. She would show it in her own way, the ways that she knew how. Right. Like, when he really wanted to go out with his friends, she would just, like, she would give him money to go out with his friends and have a good time, and that was just really her way of showing that she loved him because he wouldn't really let her. I mean, she, she like, every night, good night, Nathan, good morning, <laughs> wake up. And just she showed that she loved him by trying to get him going and motivated and to do things with his life and to be the best that he could be. She seems so sweet. She oh my gosh. The best. Yeah, everybody that we've we've spoken to, it's just she's probably one of the most giving and caring yeah, and definitely. positive. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, so positive. Yeah. She was hardly ever upset. That's insane. That's it's just something we should all long for. Um, so you know, obviously okay, we've kinda of touched on a lot of stuff. Um and obviously he knows the difference between right and wrong. Um, now just trying to get down to what the heck could have caused this. You've never seen anything like this before out of him. You've never seen any aggressive behavior. When he was younger, he, mom used to make him wash the dishes all the time and occasionally, when, this was back when, and I used to bicker with him a lot, like when I was younger, probably like between 13 and 15 or 16. I used to just make like jabs at him really bad because yeah. he used to just make me so angry and I would I would start fights when I shouldn't have, and um, sometimes when he was, like, washing the dishes or whatever, he'd, like, pick up a knife, 
just like a butter knife or whatever. And he'd just like look at me like he want. I mean, I didn't ever think that he would do anything. Sure. But. So maybe now that you've had time to look back, there, there may be a couple episodes where he may have thought. Yeah, but, but never. not in his right mind would he ever have done that. Never. So he, he would make like open threats like that. Sure. I mean, what Your siblings mom never express anything like that? Like, any changes in him lately? No. Or she, I mean, she, lately she was just getting more and more frustrated with, especially with herself, because she didn't know what else to do. She had, like, just thought about everything, and she just didn't know what else to do. But she didn't ever, like, she, in the past couple months, she didn't, like, start screaming at him all the time and just was so angry. She just, she showed it by doing things. Like, kicking him out to the back porch. Right, right. Did she consider making him go somewhere else? Yeah, every once in a while, she if she got really fed up, she'd, like, get out. Like, right now. Leave. Get in your car and go somewhere. And sometimes she would even, like, show up to, like, the library or, like, McDonald's and try and see, make sure he was safe. Because, or Christian's house. Just to drive by, see if his car is there. But, um, yeah, every once in a while, but not more than for, like, a day. Because she didn't want to run on the streets. She just couldn't bear that. <coughs> yeah, she didn't seem like the type that would be able to no. she couldn't just leave him hanging like that. It's not her nature. Um, do you, when was the last time you, you talked, you left at what, 8 or 10? Um, what day did I? I think she left at around 8, right? Or did I, she have to be at work at 8? I think she, what day was it? Wednesday? Well, I had to be there at nine. I think um, I had to be at work by noon that day, so I think I left at like eleven fifteen. Okay. And he, while I was getting ready for work, Christian had picked him up because I think his car keys were inside. And that day, she had actually locked him out on the porch, so he couldn't get inside. Mm -hmm. um, so Christian had picked him up while I was getting ready for work. Did you see them leave? Because there was some controversy whether he left with Christian that day. Or do you just assume they were had left? Cause I'm pretty sure. Anymore. I mean, I, he, his car was still in the driveway and they were gone when I left for work. Okay, so you didn't see him out on the back? No. And to, to you say that the door was locked, do you, are you sure of that? Or Yeah, it was, it locked. was locked. Okay. Yeah, but I guess she had <clears> let him <throat> in when she got home from work. What time does she normally get home? Um, Wednesday, I think is her early day. She gets off at like 3.34. And how far away does she work? Um, she lives, uh, she works at the town center. Okay, so book. she's by 4.30 at the moment. Yeah. Unless, she, so she's shopping, like, all the time. So, honestly, I have no idea what time she would have gone. She might have gone food shopping, clothes shopping. She's always shopping. Does she normally cook dinner for everybody? Yeah. she Normally, unless she doesn't feel like cooking. <laughs> then she gets, like, pizza or something. Okay, so it wouldn't be uncommon for her to come home fix something to eat. Yeah. I'm sure that day she probably seen that he didn't do anything, so she's probably aggravated. Mm -hmm. And I think, I didn't read that last article on Flag Alive, the really bad one, but I guess that they were arguing about her taking his car keys. I don't, I don't remember the specifics of the car keys. I just know that, um, well, we had obviously saw the behavioral contract that was drawn up. It appears to be maybe drawn up by your mom and dad. Um, yeah. But it didn't, it looks sort of, I mean, to me, it depicted, you know, she's coming home, she's fixing something to eat for both of them because there was two bowls. Um, and obviously she let the, did the, and the dogs go out that back door, right, though? So she would have had to open up that door to let the dogs out. Well, n no, unless she just oh, ran through the front door and left it open because they're just in the house all the time. As far as the, uh, going through the back porch, though. The fenced enclosure area back there, does that get used or no? no. For the dogs? Okay. Unless we're gone all day long, like visiting family or something, they would have to go in there. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so when she get, lets them out to go to the bathroom, they, they go the through the garage to go to the bathroom. They stay in the backyard. It's not fenced in, but they stay. Okay. They go there in the back. Um, but one, my one bigger dog, she's very protective, so if anything were happening, she was going to be right there in the middle of it. Yeah, I think she was. Yeah. She acted like she normally would. Yeah, and then being, he's the real afraid one who was inside. I think, yeah, I don't know whether that one ever 
left or he was I don't know he was inside didn't somebody get him from well inside? when I went to shut the door um I heard I heard his feet I heard his nails on the floor so I shut the door real quick I was like the little one because at first he was missing or maybe he was hiding inside I don't know nobody saw him yeah he tries to stay he went under your bed when I got there. Yeah, he tries to stay with Belle. They're, like, attached to the hip. Um, and seeing she was outside. Yeah. Caught. If there were, yeah, if if there are other people around, he won't go near her. But he'll just go where he knows where yeah, he's safe, which is the house. Right. Okay, so that, that day you had to be at work at 12, so you probably left around 11. And you said your uncle was there when you... Left yeah, him. I let him in just a couple minutes before I left because he was working on the floor because a fish tank overflowed. And we had to rip up part of the floor. So he was working on that. I don't know what time he left. Um, and you didn't talk to your mom that day? No, or maybe I did. I think she texted me and asked me if Nathan had left. Um... Yeah, she said, everything okay there? I said, yeah, Nathan, or Christian just picked Nathan up. What time was that? Um, 10.45. Okay. She said, really, was he dressed for job hunting? I said, no, and now Greg's here. She said, okay, thanks. Have a great day at work. See you tonight. And did Nathan have a phone, or did she take his phone? Um, yeah, I think he had, uh, well, I think he had just, like, this tiny little go phone or whatever. Or that she could text him on? or Yeah, that she could text and call him on, but he didn't think that he could go on the internet. I don't know. She was so back and forth with the phones with him. Because she had, at one point when he had a job, she bought him a nice phone. And then he lost his job, so she gave him a crap phone. And then, I don't know, I think she took it away. or I don't know. I was gone a lot for work. So, Did he have any other um, bad habits? or I mean, I know he had a, a sexual preference difference or what I think is way he's voicing his opinion on that um, introducing himself as transgender and stuff like that how did that is that um, just an attention seeking or is that he he, he liked to draw he, he always wanted to draw um, and he would always draw these like not like normal things just like um, anime that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and he would always draw like super sexy anime girls and he would watch the anime shows or whatever and I think that he just wanted to be just like them, and he had such an unreal, unrealistic expectation for what he wanted to be like. I don't know, I just feel like he didn't feel like he was an attractive person, so if he looked like them, maybe he thought that he could be. But I don't really think that he was trans transgender. He didn't grow up wanting to be a girl. It was just kind of like in the past couple of years, he just showed signs that he wanted to like look like a girl. When did he start expressing that? Or know. when did your mom talk about it? Three years ago, maybe. Okay, so a while. Did she have a problem with any of that? I mean, no, she, she wanted to like help him, but she wanted to make sure that that's what he really wanted. And I, I always was just like, I don't know. I feel like if you're transgender, you grow up knowing that you right. want to be the other sex, and I just feel like that's not how he was. He never really showed signs that like, besides like shaving his arms in in weird places, he just didn't really show that kind of stuff. He never had an interest in like makeup or like doing his hair. He did have long hair at one point. Why did he cut his hair? Because it had like this, apparently he had this giant mat in the back of his hair and he just, instead of getting it out, he just told my mom to cut his hair. So it was his, his request? Yeah. Yeah, he said he was like going to grow his hair out for like when he wanted to be a girl, but then he like, I guess, and he used to brush it like every time he got out of the shower. So for him to have a mat in it, just kind of like, was weird to me because he used to take care of his hair. Right. So, I don't know, maybe when he stopped taking care of his hair and wanted to cut it, maybe that signified that he was done with that phase. I don't know. That, I don't know, that part always really confused me about him. I mean, was there anything recent that maybe your mom found out about or any other bad habits or new discoveries? He was stealing money from my mom. Um, a couple, just probably like a month or two ago, we started putting our purses in our room because um, he had started taking money from my mom's purse, maybe from mine, I don't know. Um, he even started going in my mom's room, and my dad walked in on him one time, like ruffling through my mom's purse, trying to get money. 
So, but I don't know. My dad never confronted him. She, he just like, what are you doing, Nathan? But he didn't get really pissed like he normally would have. He was sober. And I think my mom said something to him and he, he denied it a bunch or whatever. But he was, he was taking money. But other than that, that's it. I think so. So, no outwardly obvious signs of change. Um, he was getting fat. He was getting fat. Yeah, he, all his life he has had a super fast metabolism. Like, eat the worst junk food. Mom had to literally lock the cabinets because he was eating everything. Like, everything. She was spending so much money on food and she was getting real tired of it. So she literally bought lock and chains, like padlocks, for the fridge and everything that, everywhere there was food that he could get. And she would lock it. And I knew the combination, my dad and my mom. But he wasn't allowed. I mean, she wasn't starving him. She would, like, leave out food that he could have for the day. But he didn't have any medical issues. I mean, when was the last time he went to the doctor? Any mm -hmm. ailments or anything? No, nothing that you're aware of? He was supposed to go to a doctor's appointment. I, I think it was either doctors or counselors just a couple days before. And uh, my mom had called me in the morning because I think his appointment, it was like 9.30 or 10 or whatever. And I woke up late and um, he was in bed and it was like after his appointment or whatever. And she called me. She's like, did he go? And I'm like, he's laying in bed. So I don't think that he went. So she's like, okay, well, open up the door and see if he went. So I like open up the door and I'm yelling at him to wake up or whatever. And I'm like, did you go? And he's like, yeah, I went. I'm like, well, what time did you get back? And he's like, like 15 minutes ago. And I was awake 15 minutes ago, and I didn't hear him, like, walk through the house. So I, like, told my mom, I was like, I'm pretty sure he's lying. So she called the doctor's office, and they're like, no, he didn't come in. So she was really mad about that. So it's almost like he was becoming more defiant. Oh, yeah. Or has he always been that defiant? Um, or is it getting worse? It was getting worse, yeah. And he just, like, straight up lied, and my mom confronted him that night. And she's like, well, did you go? And he's like, yeah. And he like, and she's like, well, what did you guys talk? Oh, I think it was a counselor because she asked what they talked about. And he just like went on and on about this story that they like talked about. And she's like, Nathan, I know you didn't go. Oh, we just kind of was like, he didn't really say anything. She's like, why? And he just like didn't have an answer. Gosh, that was gonna be so frustrating. She was. It was very frustrating. <sighs> so. You know, I mean, factoring all this in, I mean, obviously it's, it is a little bit of a building tension because of the fact that he's getting older. Yeah. And he's an adult and he should be out on his own. And Making his own money and providing for himself. So he was eating up all the money. And your mom kind of probably, if she's any mother like me, it's like you battle with yourself because you don't want to be an enabler, yeah. but you can't stop taking care of your kid either. Mm -hmm. That's why she was. So, I mean, I'm sure she's trying to put her foot down a little bit. Yeah, as much as she could, like, allow herself to do. She couldn't ever put him out on the street. That's just not something that she could do. So, what do you think was the final, just, I mean, what, when people ask you, uh, and I know it's, well, it's probably not happened directly, but, I mean, well, I'm, I mean, I if mean, he, he'd, uh, he was not in his right mind. That's one thing that I know for sure. Something switched. Something, like, broke in his brain. And he just, all of his built-up anger and rage, he just took it out on my mom. Everything that he'd been mad about, everything, it just broke. He had no, no control, I'm assuming, because he never would have done that to my mom. He loved my mom. Right. And that's one thing that we, we try to pass on, which is why we gather so much mm -hmm. intel, you know, ahead of time. Um, you know, as far as what the norm was, what was, it, you know, and what are the episodes? We're not psychiatrists, so we don't, we don't have the background on it, but we need to at least gather the intel for them to run it by a psychiatrist. Um, but is that the way it happens? Do they just snap and then snap out of it? Or because, I mean, obviously when we, we got with him that night, he was full information. When you tell the stories about him just lying bold face and not even thinking twice about it, that's kind of the way he was with us because he was leading us to believe, giving us descriptions of a suspect. Yeah. He blamed your dad. 
Um, he even gave excuses. I don't think it can be your dad. You know, I, I did. No, he's probably changed his shirt. He's probably got a bloody shirt in his truck. Hence why I had to search your dad's truck. I yeah, mean, because he knows my dad always has like extra clothes in his truck. So we had to cover all bases that night because he was adamant, you know, that. Um, he's not usually like, like that where he makes up, besides the fact that Besides the counseling thing that he didn't go to, he's not usually, like, just straight-up lies about that kind of stuff. Doesn't make up whole stories. Well, he finally is. said that he was scared to go to jail. That's... Yeah. He said... I don't trust it, his so friend I don't. Christian. Honestly, I think that his friend Christian had a really big um, influence, probably, on what Nathan said to you guys. Really? Yeah. I don't, I don't I mean, like Christian, and I don't... I just don't trust him in any way. And Christian has had a history with law enforcement and things that he shouldn't have done. But your mom testified. We, I remember that case. Your mom testified on his behalf in the sentencing yeah. well, Your mom and dad both, actually. I know. And my dad talked to me. And he said that he definitely regretted it because yeah. he just... now that he Yeah, I remember that. I mean, I, I was working here when they had that case. So. Yeah, the he... Details. My dad told me that... Um, they asked my dad if he was um, worried about Christian doing anything to me, and he said no. That was what he said no to, because he he knew that I would be Christian's ass if sure. Christian tried to even come near me. And then my dad would, like, not actually kill him, but he would kill him. And so that was what he was saying no about, but he didn't, I don't know, I just don't crush, trust Christian. He has always been so incredibly rude, even to my mom. Really? Yeah, because... Um, it's everything going on with my brother and his computers and laptops and things being taken away. Christian always had some say in it, like legal say, even though I'm sure he knew nothing. But he's like, oh, your mom can't do that. And when my mom was going to kick him out, your mom can't do that. She needs 30 days and blah, blah, blah. And he always had something to say. He's just, he, a couple times he has been so incredibly rude to my mom that we didn't allow him at the house for like two and a half years. Really? Oh, yeah. And he just has this, even if you talk to, like, Nathan's other friends that he used to have, they're not friends with him anymore because he's still friends with Christian. Gotcha. And they say that Christian has had this, like, weird influence over Nathan in the way that he's like, does things, the way he acts. So I would have no doubt that he Christian told Nathan to lie to you guys and that Christian, like, made up this story because Christian really hates my dad. Because my dad at one point, like, freaked out on Christian for being rude to my mom and being yeah. incredibly disrespectful. So, I wouldn't yeah, doubt I think, it. Um, I forget who told me that's why I was trying to keep you guys from not running into each other when you were here. Because I wasn't sure. Somebody told me that. Yeah. That your dad didn't get along with him. No. Mm -hmm. I used to hang out. Nathan and I used to go over Christian's house when I was, like, real little. Like, mm -hmm. maybe 12. And I only went over there, like, a couple times. And then he started to, like, freak me out. I never knew anything, I, just until like a week ago when my dad told me about the rape cases. I didn't know anything about those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we a lot of those, unfortunately. So to your knowledge, you didn't see it come, you didn't see any major changes in him um, up until that. It's just the normal battles, the normal yeah. discussions just of trying to get getting him worse. motivated. Um, tension got a little bit more because obviously he wasn't trying as much. I would imagine he didn't try at all in the beginning, probably. Um, but your mom didn't express any other episodes, anything out of the norm um, prior to that you remember? Any acts of violence, any acts of violence towards anybody else, the animals, anything like that? No. She was encouraging him to go to counseling towards the later part. What was that specifically for? Do you know? Just so that he could like talk to somebody because he wouldn't really talk to my mom. So he, she wanted him to talk to somebody and maybe find out like what's going on in his head. Okay. But he just wouldn't go. And he's been to counselors before. Yeah, right? he has. He used to go with my mom and sometimes they would go like together and then sometimes they would go separately. But yeah, he used to go. I think even one time my mom forced me to go. I didn't. She told me I wouldn't be allowed to go to a horse shop if I didn't, so I did. So you can do what you got to do? Yeah. Did it seem to help him in the earlier Um. Honestly, episodes? yeah, I think yeah. it did. I don't really know. I think maybe our insurance changed or something, and then we stopped going to that one person. Or, I don't know. I don't really know. And when she was local, who was the first counselor? I don't, I don't remember. I don't, I don't 
keep ca- track. Because she was like always changing. When you were forced to go, it didn't traumatize you for life. <laughs> she was always changing counselors because I think one at one time somebody was like rude to her. She didn't like them, and so she was like bouncing around to different counselors. She did like the last lady, Deborah. I don't remember her last name. She she called me. She's going to her service. Um, did you talk to the one I gave you? That was her, right? Though wasn't Deb? Yeah. Yeah. You mm-hmm. talked to her. Yeah. She seemed really sweet. She was like, she was so devastated. Um, I didn't know things had changed, why she was very adamant. Because I I think even Christian said that your mom had came by his house to say, are you going? And uh, he was like, yeah, no, I'm not going. So I didn't know if something had happened. And I think after she went to Christian's, she went to her brother's house, which is like right down the road to talk to him about everything because she didn't really know what else to do. And I wasn't home and my dad wasn't there, so he was the closest one. Yeah, what's the repercussions for not going to counseling? I mean, what's your next step, you yeah. know? It's like you can only, you only do so much. Is there anything else you think of that we should know? I don't know. I don't think so. I think that he should go into some sort of mental institution because I know for a fact he won't survive prison. He won't. He won't want to survive prison. Have you ever thought of what would happen if he would have been there? All the time. I kind of wish I was there. I bet. But you also realize it could have been you and not your mom, and then your mom would have just been absolutely... I couldn't even imagine that as a mom. No. I feel like maybe I was there, I could fight him off, or things would be different. She would only be hurt, not dead. Glad every day. Well, as much as we wish we could do something different too, we will do everything in our power from this point forward to at least, you know. I mean, obviously we have a case to work, um, but as I expressed to you in the very beginning, it's we're humans. You know, we're not just just law enforcement with no heart, and um, this. The state's driving the bus, though, you know that. Do you think that they'll try and get him into a mental, mental place? I, it's hard for me to express at that point. I mean, you're going to factor in the way the state works. They factor in every piece of the puzzle, you know. He he just seems, you know, and, and like I said, you, if it were me, I mean, I would, I would want to know how those episodes work, you know, because um, he... He took steps before he even got to Christians. I know you, you say Christian played a big role in what he said. He took steps before he got to Christians like what? to cover his crime. So he knew what he was doing, um, you know, certain placements of stuff to make it look like a crime had been committed. So in his mind, he that was just already... doesn't seem like him at all. And, and, and he's not like super logical about that kind of stuff. When I was younger, I used to think that he did certain things to just, like, make me mad or to just to do things, but yeah. that was not the case. He just did them because that's what he does, and he just didn't think about that kind of stuff. He wasn't, I don't know, um, he just didn't think things through. So for him to do that really kind of, like, <clears throat> I don't understand that. That's just, like, not... And I think he brother. had us. <laughs> he had a little bit of time where, I mean, just just for me seeing how everything unfolded, I could totally see, have you ever had like um, something happen to you and you just kind of feel like you're on the outside looking in almost because it's just so unreal. It seems like maybe, I mean, he got caught up in that, but then he had a moment to adjust it appears to me he had a he had time in between and that's when he you know he's looking at it like oh crap now what you know look what I've done or it is what it appears to me I just don't know how but he, that's when he took the steps <clears throat> to cover the to make so it look like something calm. else I feel like he would just the type of person that he is he would have like freaked out and just Shaken called 911 yeah. something yeah yeah I, I agree know. I just it blows my mind that he was able to do all that. And to stay focused and give repetitive and suspect And get in a car and drive. I just... Doesn't seem... No, that's... Even, 
I know. I we try to understand it, but then again, I I mean, I can't. I I can only go with what exactly happened, and and then just try to make sense of it afterwards. Okay. And that's not just something me. That's gonna have to be you know specialists and stuff. Um, but you know, I mean, the 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 end of the day, at least we're not you know dealing with an unsolved issue, and we have time to. Now we just have to pick up the pieces and just move forward and create a new norm because you'll never get closure or anything because obviously you're going to be drugged through this. Um, but anything that you, you know, think or want to add later, I mean, I know your your dad's kind of taken, I think, a protective role. Yeah, probably he's, he's really trying. He's got all my brother's medical files from, like, the yeah. day he was born, and he's been meeting with somebody to try and get him into Right. But I was, he he saw my brother, I don't know if you know, through yeah, I heard video that. chatter. I didn't, I was out of town, but I heard that he was going to go see him. He didn't say much, but he said he's never seen anybody so devastated. And he, he said that my brother told my dad that he loved him. I have never heard my brother say that to my dad. Right. So that just. And that's why I wanted to, to make sure I covered it with you in the beginning if, you know, if he showed any signs of affection or anything like that in the past because... When he finally came out with the truth, he was a mess. I bet. So to hold that in is a lot. Exactly. Um, but is that you know? I mean, when you hold stuff in like that and you're sticking with a lie, you know you're doing it consciously. You know what I mean? But then when you finally release it, just off your shoulders, he can finally then grieve and and take responsibility for his actions and stuff like that. Yeah. And he was super, super, super emotional at that point. That's why I was wondering what the norm was with him, with emotions. And I know he has emotions, but he just, he holds balls them in. up and he holds them. So, and it doesn't surprise me that he broke. And he just let everything out. Right. And at first, I think he unfortunately broke with just anger and frustration. And then, and then he broke with remorse and... you guys are going to just be, you're stuck in the middle and it's just frustrating because the state obviously is going to be meeting with you guys on coming to a, I mean, it's kind of good because then you guys can have such a major input to come to an agreement and a conclusion. And I, and we will do everything we can. I don't, you know, it's going to ultimately be up to them, but you still have your voice, you know? Yeah. I want to see him, but I don't want to see him, so I don't really know what I want to do with that yet. I know, it's so difficult, too, because everything's on everyone. video, and it's just so unpersonal. I don't know, my dad said that um, the lawyer or whatever told my dad, or uh, told my brother, like, not to say anything, mm -hmm. but he said a lot. That's what my dad said, but he hasn't told me what really yet. So you and your dad just kind of... <sighs> my dad, the first rock. couple days, he was, like, crawled into a bottom. And then finally, he just like, within the first couple of days, I was meeting up with Yvette, my mom's sister, a bunch. And I was over there, and her brother was down, and both her brothers were there. We had some other family, and we were um, all meeting up to try and talk about the service and try and get things moving. And he shows up like two hours late. He had been at the house all day, my house. And he was supposed to be cleaning up with Artie and the cleaning crew. Mm -hmm. But the cleaning crew wasn't there, so he gets there, and he has, like, my mom's blood on his face, and I'm like, and he's wasted. He's drunk. Oh, jeez. And so he, he just starts, like, arguing with me, and he's like, how dare you start this stuff without me? And I'm like, we didn't, we didn't do anything. Like, I found a company, because I know the people who own it, or used to own it, and that was it. We haven't even called them yet. And he's just, like, yelling at me, and at one point he grabbed my arm, and I just, like, tore away from him, and I'm like, don't you ever touch me. And I just walked out of there, and my cousin came out, and I'm like... Tell him when he starts acting like a father that we can talk and tell him to wipe my mom's blood off his face and I left. And he was in the bottle for the next couple of days and then finally he like calls me or he called me that night and he had because he had my clothes that I needed because I was for like two days I was wearing the same pair, same clothes. And he's like, come get your clothes. Um, come meet me. And I'm like, I don't want to see you right now. Can you take them to Cheryl's house, which is right down the road? Right. Like, no, you can come get them. Come get them from the house. I'm like, I don't want to go to the house. He's like, okay. 
And so he's like yelling at me and I hang up on him. Five minutes later, he calls him back, come get your stuff from the house. I don't want to go to the house. <laughs> like, don't you get that? So he stayed at the house that night. And my uncle went there the next day to go get my stuff. And that's when I found, that's when they found out the house wasn't clean and he's walking around the house in his bare feet. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that's when I had to go over there and we called the cops and I had the trespassing thing. I was the trespassing notice. Did any of you guys talk after that? Yeah, after that, he, that night, he went back up there. And then he, like, called me on the phone. He, like, started to apologize. And I'm like, you crawled into a bottle and when I needed you most. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then we, he just started arguing again. Like, let me back in the house. And I just, like, I just kept hanging up on him. Mm-hmm. And then Brendan, Greg, my mom's, like, best friend from a long time ago. She drove down in their RV. And he had been staying with them for a while while they were here. And he sobered up. And they worked on a lot of the stuff for the service. And then he went up, he went back up to St. Augustine on Sunday night. And then I talked to him on Monday and for sure he's drinking again. Ugh. And he just like kept calling me. I'm like trying to, I'm being with the family that I'm staying with. And we were at the pool with a bunch of people. And I'm just trying to have like a nice relaxing day. And he just keeps calling me and calling me like, what are you doing? I just told you what I'm doing. Jesus. And then he's like blowing up my phone. And I asked him to email me pictures so that I could get him on a slideshow. And he's, he texts me with them one by one. I had like a hundred text messages and he just keeps oh, calling geez. me and I'm like, stop it, stop it. So now you gotta get through the service. Hopefully yeah. he comes somewhat sober. I think that he will. And um, we put everything legal on hold because I just, as soon as he finds out that he's not getting the house and the vehicles and all the money, it's just gonna put a wall between us. So I figured I might as well wait until the service that way it won't be bad at the service right. because there's a will and she wrote this from 2001 when they're still married and she wrote my husband gets this my husband gets that my husband gets this but they're divorced now so that kind of like nullifies things and um she was in the process of making a new will so i'm fighting like all of that and, oh man yeah because she didn't want him to have the house no no she bought him she bought him out I mean, he, like, kind of helped pay for it when he did have a job. So she, like, in the past, like, year and a half, she's given him, like, $22,000. I, I, like, she, like, wrote receipts down and made him sign it. And she signed it and copied the checks and all that. So so that's did, proof there, too, that yeah. she's obviously keeping things separate yeah. and keeping track. So mm-hmm. so she didn't want him. She was just kind of, like, front, made, breaking everything off, money, everything. She had her own bank account, and I think he's trying to get everything. Because when he was in the house, he took a bunch of paperwork. He grabbed the will. Um, Do you so. think it's still, he thinks it's still accurate or whatever? I don't know. Yeah. He's probably going to have to make like that, too. I don't know, but mm-hmm. Florida law or whatever. And I don't even think he turned in the original, and I think you have to do that within, like, 10 days or something. But now I'm going to fight it. And the, my lawyers are like, yeah, you're going to get all of this stuff. I mean, I'll help my dad out because he doesn't have a job, but I'm not... My mom supported him. She, like, he didn't have a job for a long time. So she was, yeah. like, paying his rent on his house, and he was living with us, and he just, like, wasn't really trying to get a job either. And that's another thing that she was really... She was tired of. That's one of the main reasons why she kicked him out, because she couldn't... She can't deal with that. Yeah. How are she supposed to enforce it on one side? And, yeah. And lead by example, and you're not getting a job either. My mom and I were the only people providing for the household. Definitely, or your mother. <laughs> That's the one blessing. Yeah, I'm thankful. <laughs> Without a doubt. All right, well, I don't want to keep you too much longer. I just have to officially have to go through, you know, your timeline that day. And obviously, I saw you when you showed up. You had just gotten off at work when? Um, I think I got up at like 8.15 that day. Oh, do you want to know anything? Is it? I want Flag of Life shut down. <laughs> I do all the time. It's horrible. Is there any way, is it legal that they posted something about the death of my mother before the family was notified? Because if I was on Facebook at work and saw that my mother was... Had it happen. That's basically how I found out. Cheryl was on Facebook and saw it and called me. So. I know that it gets very tricky with um, 
those laws. And I know they have the right to our records um, to a degree. So I don't, I don't know the timing. I know that he's, he's showed up on accident scenes and taken pictures of people's vehicles prior to us even getting notification done and posted them. Um, there's certain stuff like that. Yeah, but, like my address was out there. I mean, he, yeah, he could have, he, he could have been on scene because he listens to the, the medical side of the radios, which we've at least, you know, kept the law enforcement radios from them. Um, it, they're not public, but unfortunately they can monitor the medical. So he could have easily taken a picture of the house. Um, and yeah, my house, it. my house was on there. My address was on there. The homeowner was on there. All of that was on there. And see, that's the stuff he does, which is all public record. So that's mm -hmm. where he finds those loopholes and does kind of almost his own investigation. And um, they're all protected by... He's Florida posting session. that my brother has, like, no mental medical history. That's completely wrong. Do you know me, Dr. CC? There is a lot of false information that I I've seen. And I'm there, not, so on my Facebook, I mean, so many of my friends want him shut down. I mean, I'm just, it's unbelievable. And I just, I'm going to try and fight it best I can. And I know Artie really hates him, like, a lot. I know. Oh, we have, I mean, like... People that are really big in the community too that have been personally affected. Mm -hmm. I mean, take our captain for the fire department. I mean, Lane Burnson's dad. Yeah, I know that he had a he had an incident very similar. Um, same thing though. I mean, it's just it's brutal. But if I can think of anything, or if I can see any flaws, I would definitely you know. But. And then the um, my dad has been today, especially on the way over here, he's like, you need to have that trespassing thing lifted, and I don't know if I want to do that yet because of everything, the conflict with the lawyers and the will and all that, but he's saying it's because he wants to be there in case the hurricane hits because my cats are still there, and if anything happens to the house, he can, like, be there, so I don't know, I just kind of wanted your opinion on what I should do. I think until everything is settled, I think you would probably be more comfortable. I mean, you have resources to um, check on things. I don't think the wind damage is supposed to be... We have I mean, how did you guys do house. with the last one? A tree fell on my truck. Fell in the bed in my truck. But I don't know. If I this is going to be a Category 5, I have no idea. There are a bunch of trees surrounding our house. So, tall pine trees. I mean, that would make you feel more comfortable than so be it. I mean, and but his house in San Augustine, he like they evacuated him like right away for the last hurricane. Yeah, so, he's too close to the. Yeah, and it's an old house, so I don't really know. Maybe I'll wait another couple of days to see if the hurricane's really gonna hit or not. If he's not working or anything, why can't he go start working on some of the trees? I don't, well, the trees are fine. He's just worried if they do fall. <laughs> if you invite him in, it avoids it, obviously. But um, if he, if there's another act of harassment or something, that would support you for doing it again. I know, my it's uncle just thinks it's not a good idea. Crap, you shouldn't have to deal with is what it is. It's just ridiculous. My dad was like, I have no motives to stay there, but I think that I should be there for the hurricane. And yeah, and that's when you got to worry about that. You invite I mean, him. You invite him in and let him stay there, and then he can. I know. Use that against you. So I have... Who's close to you? Isn't somebody close to you, though? Yeah, Greg is there, but I don't want the cats to be there alone for the hurricane. He's allergic to us. I mean, he said that he would take them, but, like, I don't know. I guess we could just leave the house fine. Empty. My dad was like, well, if there's, like, a hole and it starts leaking through the roof, then I can patch it. I'm like, well, it's a brand new roof. So, I don't know. I'm just saying those are pretty good. Oh, yeah. They're pretty good. I'd say I'd take them when I live in a trailer, so I'm a sitting duck. Oh. I've got like six Our dogs family. and oh. tons of. Our family left because they're in an RV and they're like, nope, we're going to Yeah, I would probably stay. bolt too. Yeah. I was joking around. I was like, I'll call rotation for my house. Yeah, I'm just kidding. But it's so true. <laughs> My house can move so easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have an old house too, it's like from the 80s. Let's so just pray. It takes that easterly, mm -hmm. bolts out to the ocean. 
I think we're just going to get rain. I mean, I think the flooding is going to be intense. We have so much family flying in and driving in from, like, everywhere. We have, like, 150 people coming to the service. I don't even know what we'll do if we have to cancel it. Yeah, because it's, um... Isn't it making landfall in, in the south on Sunday, though? Mm, I think it's, like, Saturday. Yeah. And it's all outside? It's covered, but it's outside. Just my luck, right? That's gotta be brutal. Let's just really, oh my gosh, she's just gonna have to go for a track change. I just think it's gonna rain on me, actually. You know, I couldn't order a um, ton of umbrellas. Personalized. <laughs> Well, I don't know what else we can do besides we can't move the storm. Mm -hmm. But if you do think of anything, I mean, gosh, let us know. I know we're going to be getting our... We're the ones that have to get to work, so... All of our stuff has to wait. We've got to work and help. All right, so this, you know, have anything else to add? I think we're pretty good there. Um, I'll definitely voice your opinion on what you think. Um, and your concerns and stuff too. Um, but but we're here, so let us know if anything doesn't make sense or if you hear something. Please don't believe everything you hear or read, as you've learned. Mm -hmm. um, if you want any clarification on anything, just text me or Cardi, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, anything we can think of, and I'll obviously be thinking about you nonstop until this storm is figuring out what it's going to do. Anything else? Before I swear you back in, everything said. I don't think so. No. Aaron, you swear in front of the same you right today. It's truthful, truth, not the truth. So, yeah. Okay. All right, let's get you out of here. I'm sure you won't have a. Yeah, back to corn. How many horses you got out there? 30 something. At one point, we had like 40. Oh, yeah, yeah. We just walked out there.